Friday, December 3rd, 2010. This is the CSE News Network's Evening News with Hovav Shakam. The top story today is ongoing revelations of corruption and scandal exposed by the re recent WikiLeaks release of internal CSE documents. The documents, including five years of internal emails and memoranda, are suspected to have been leaked by a Google employee as part of the recent Jacob School Gmail conversion. The CSE department <laughs> chair, Rajesh Gupta, has called the release a threat to department security. We go now to Bill Griswold, who is providing a special report on what's being called Logic Gate. <laughs> Thanks, Ova. The claims are nothing short of extraordinary. If true, the Logic Gate materials document a broad range of questionable activities of which the most explosive is the practice that is being called extraordinary graduation. <laughs> in which students are blindfolded, taken to secret rooms, and forced to defend a dissertation under duress. <laughs> the emails further document a series of enhanced education techniques, <laughs> including classes, including required classes, forced research exams, and notorious paper reading of, of CSE 221, a practice that is widely regarded as torture. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. However, this is just the surface of the accusations that are emerging in light of this material, and it's become clear that CSC is a department ruled by the powerful through fear. After the break, I'll talk with one faculty member who was willing to talk to us on camera. If he were to use go-tos, they would not be considered harmful. His data is always in the cache. <laughs> Conferences apply to his papers for acceptance. <laughs> As a hobby, he renders feature-length computer animated films by hand. <laughs> he is the most interesting computer scientist in the world. I don't always do functional programming, but when I do, I prefer Haskell. Stay pure, my friends. Welcome back. We now have Professor Jeff Volker in our studio, who agreed to speak to us in spite of great personal risk. Dr. Volker, can you explain in your own words how the department has changed while you're, you've been there and what you have to say about the most extreme logic gate claims of drug running, death squads, and rampant empiricism. <laughs> well, well, thanks, Bob. I'm really not sure where to begin. It's all true. <laughs> when I started in CAC, I did real systems science. I studied the fundamental effects of caching under various constraints and workloads. Then Savage came. <laughs> At first, I thought it was a good thing for the department. He brought lots of money, attracted students with sexy problems, and told a really, really slick story. It's all about impact, he would say. Always impact. I was lured by his promises of relevance and excitement. Soon, I was on the impact bandwagon, too. I was blind to what was happening. It all came to a head <laughs> when Savage brought on the Russian, Levchenko. <laughs> Everyone said he was a theory student, but I should have looked into his background. I can only blame myself. With Levchenko, everything changed, and we morphed from a research organization to a large-scale criminal enterprise. <laughs> he ran illegal drugs, <laughs> smuggling, and forgery. <laughs> I tried to complain to the chair, but he said that the research was bringing in millions of dollars, and we couldn't be picky in this fiscal climate. Worst, he turned my own students against me, brainwashing them with promises of glory and training them into his own elite hit squad. I 
I live in fear every day that my next paper may be my last. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Volker. We were unable to reach Department Chair Rajesh Gupta for comment, but spokesperson Joyce Bernardo told the CSE News Network that while the department does not dispute the particular facts in question, they are, quote, taken out of context and do not reflect the comprehensive research accomplishments of our faculty, staff, and students. After the break, we will highlight some of these accomplishments in our weekly segment, CSE Stuff. He knows if your program will terminate. <laughs> Once, he wrote a program for the Turing test. It won the race for governor. His iPhone supports Flash. When he chairs a conference, only the good papers are accepted. He is the most interesting computer scientist in the world. I don't always queue, but when I do, I queue FIFO. <laughs> Stay bursty, my friends. <laughs> Welcome back. Tonight in our segment, CSE Stuff, we highlight the top new research achievements here in San Diego. First, a recent collaboration between CSE faculty member Tayana Rosing and research scientist Yuvraj Agarwal combines their two energy-related efforts into one unified system driven by a new human-centric user interface designed by Professor Bill Griswold. Dr. Griswold is here with us in the studio to explain, explain their work. Thanks for having me back, Hovav. The idea underlying Project Red Light, Green Light is to save power by scheduling utilization dynamically. In our system, a central controller implemented in this prototype by my daughter using a megaphone, but generalizes to any child, <laughs> will vocally declare so-called green light periods of activity during which computers may be used in the department. However, at random intervals, she will call a red light period, and any computers found still drawing power are erased and rebooted. <laughs> The key insight behind our interface design is that by drawing on the powerful metaphor of a classic children's game, we are able to implicitly educate users about the importance of power conservation and thus impact usage. Thank you, Bill. Next up, we have Stefan Savage, who will describe a spin-off effort from his group's recent work on automobiles. Thank you, Hovav. I, I want to be clear that while the automotive work was a large team effort. The credit today for today's highlight goes solely to Steve Chekaway. His recently published experimental security analysis of a modern pant <laughs> is destined to be a classic. He educates us that modern pants, from jeans to chinos, are not mere textiles, but are a complex communications fabric pervasively monitored and controlled by dozens of digital computers. Indeed, he documents that the only part of a modern gene that is truly manual controlled is the top button. The rest is computer intermediated. <laughs> to demonstrate the point, Chekhov and his colleagues reverse engineered a modern pant and showed that by introducing rogue instructions via the coin pocket, they could infiltrate the embedded crank unit, or ECU, <laughs> and create malicious cranky pants. <laughs> Chekhov would not identify the particular brand of pants used, saying that he believes that cranky pants and the cranky pants vulnerability is an industry-wide problem. <laughs> However, textile industry experts claim that the threat is small since few people make their change pockets available to outside actors, and the hypothetical threat of remote pants compromised by laundry soap is far-fetched. More information can be found at his website. <laughs> We've actually generalized this attack. Can you pull up a web browser? <laughs> Can you pull up the web browser on screen, please? No. <laughs> <laughs> I promise this is work safe. I think the three words are, I don't care. <laughs> Thanks, Stefan. 
In other news, Iman Sadeghi and his advisor Henrik Juan Jensen are basking in the glory of their huge SIGGRAPH success with the rendering hair, featured in Disney's Tangled. However, Iman has since chosen to focus on an even more ambitious challenge now. Teeth. Now supported by Colgate Fellowship, Iman has studied deeply the complex physical light transport interactions posed by rendering modern teeth, complexities that have so far prevented Pixar and Disney alike from pursuing the dental-oriented stories so popular in live-action films. <laughs> As part of his model, Iman is able to capture the specular reflection of the enamel, um, forward light scattering at the dentino enamel junction, complex caustics that introduce halos around molar fissures, while still providing intuitive controls to artists for holistic effects such as plaque and tartar. <laughs> Industry watchers expect to see Iman's algorithms in a range of animated vampire and werewolf films appearing this summer. <laughs> Finally, I'd like to highlight some of my own work, joined with Dong Sak Jang and his advisors Ranjit Jala and Soren Lerner. Our rigorous academic study of history sniffing on porn sites has attracted widespread interest from the popular media, such as leading adult industry forum, XBiz. Impact. <laughs> We've since started follow-ons to this work, including history peeping, history listening, and history tasting. I asked my colleague Soren Lerner to speak about the experience. Soren? Thanks, Hovav. So when I was a graduate student, um, I always wondered what my advisors meant when they said, try to work on a sexy problem. <laughs> I didn't understand what they meant until now. So when Hovav suggested I shift my focus from traditional programming systems to model checking porno sites, I was certainly intrigued, but I didn't realize how transformative it would be. Now all my papers get accepted. <laughs> my students work extra long hours. And I have the personal satisfaction of working on a problem that has real impact on the common man. Thanks, Soren. We have to take a commercial break, but when we return, we'll look at how the logic gate revelations are impacting the ongoing unionization efforts at UCSD. He once introduced a bug, just to see how it felt. <laughs> His transactions only need one phase to commit. Google links to him to improve their page rank. <laughs> if you asked, he could tell you if computer science is really a science. He is the most interesting computer scientist in the world. I rarely commit, but when I do, I use only one phase. Stay acid, my friends. Welcome back. In our final news segment today, we're covering the unionization effort that has been a lightning rod for controversy. Originally, it was only the United Auto Workers Union that was seeking to organize TAs and GSRs, but with new revelations of kickbacks and payoffs, what seemed like a shoe-in has become much less certain. In light of this, several new unions are vying to organize the graduate student body, ranging from the Screen Writers Guild, who argue that students need to institute paper writing work stoppages, or even a research strike to get their needs met, to the National Football League Players Union, which sees themselves as a more natural fit for computer science students than the auto workers. Perhaps the most interesting candidate is Ranjit McMillan, hot off his campaign for New York governor, who is here recruiting with a message of open access to food, lower academic standards, and contractual guarantees of on-campus personal item mail delivery. Ranjit? Allow me to introduce myself. I represent the standards of too damn high party. <laughs> Grad students working two hours a day, three days a week, four months a year, the standards are too damn high. <laughs> Faculty asking students to take classes, teach classes, do classes, do research, the standards are too damn high. <laughs> My main job is to put a computer on your desk, free food in the hallway, and personal items delivered to your mailbox. This is politics as usual. Playing a silly game, it's not gonna happen. 
standards are too damn high movement. The people I'm here to represent, they, they just don't like it. The standards are too damn high. They can't get their mail sent. Their packages being sent back right now as I speak. They can't take their food in the hallway. Breakfast, lunch, or dinner. <laughs> listen. Listen. Do you hear that? Right now, a tear. A tear stomach growls. Do you hear that? You gotta listen. You gotta listen like me. The standards are too damn high. That's quite a platform. I understand your message has been received quite negatively by some faculty who feel that the student standards should be raised and not lowered. How do you respond to them? As a karate expert, I will not talk about any professor up here. But our children cannot graduate. Will anybody think about the children? They can't pass the core, they can't pass the research exam, they take the qualifying exam. They can't defend their thesis. Once again, why? You said it, the standards are too damn high. Thank you, Mr. McMillan. However, while your position is succinct, some have argued that you're a one-issue candidate. Can you offer a position or a message on any of the other key political questions of the day, such as legalization of marijuana, or is your focus strictly on academic standards? No, 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 that's a totally different problem. That's a totally different problem. Have you seen Gary Cottrell? I'm totally against legalization, because if it passes, the faculty will be too damn high. Once again, thanks for joining us in the studio today. And now, as always, and now as always, for our closing segment, we have Kamalika Shaduri popularly known as Ms. Kelanius, who will read questions sent to her advice column, Dear Misk. Dear Misk, I don't have a web page and I'm panicking. Professor Savage says that I'm destined to fail in life as a result. But I'm a theory student and all this HTML stuff is so complex. What should I do? Sincerely, panicked about pages. Dear Panicked, do not worry. Many people have trouble making web pages. Even some faculty have trouble. <laughs> Every discipline has its own way of handling the problem. Let me tell you what it is for theory, how theory handles it using a formal approach. First, we have the base case. We assume some theory web page exists with the set of web pages. Next, the inductive step. If a theory web page exists, then an updated version of the theory page also exists. As a result, we can prove that the theory web page both exists and is up to date. <laughs> Next, um, dear Misk, I use Shea Bob, but I take food without paying, and whenever a new food shipment arrives, I leave the building so no one will ask me for help. This has always seemed consistent with the graduate student credo of self-interested pursuit of free food. However, recently, I'm beginning to doubt myself. Can you help? Sincerely, Unethical from Ithaca. <laughs> Dear Unethical, you should indeed be worried. The issue is not so much ethics, but of your personal safety. Recently, WikiLeaks accounts have revealed that the political climate in Shebab is highly tense. Their dictator, their leader, the dictator for life, Michael Vrabel, is reported to be highly unstable. <laughs> in a re <laughs> See, there is the evidence. In a recent public proclamation, he declared there is presently a pile of cardboard boxes sitting on the couches in the grad lounge. Do you know what would be awesome? Having that pile disappear. When that didn't happen, do you know what he did? He personally ripped the heads of three students. <laughs> Faculty are attempting to use diplomatic means to graduate him, but that takes time. In the meantime, it is best if you help out with Shea Bob and pay for every item you consume.
Dear Miss, I am a faculty member in CSE and every year I skip the holiday party. I figure only students go, so why should I bother? Sincerely, Tacky with tenure. <laughs> Dear Tacky, do not worry. Only the uncool faculty ever go. <laughs> Your non-attendance is a mark of distinction that is memorialized for all time. You should feel free to continue missing it and focus on important things grooming your CV. Thank you, Kamalika. And that's all for tonight. Please join us next week as we cover recent shocking developments on So You Think You Can Hack. <laughs> and now, a few final words from our sponsor. Nigerian princes really do send him millions of dollars via email. His personality is so magnetic, he can only use flash-based storage. He can compute entirely with zeros. He uses ones for flair. His dissertation required his advisors to defend themselves. He is the most interesting computer scientist in the world. I don't always use machine learning, but when I do, I support vector machines. <laughs> Stay supervised, my friends.